request the Starkey to accept charges for this phone call from a prisoner at the Rikers Island Correctional Facility. Yo, this is Larray. Who do you want from me? You know who I am. You know you can work for me. Or, well, you don't have a lot of choices. Look, I got no beef with you, okay? What do you want me to do? Good man. What I need you to do is simple. You hauled produce before you went on the inside, right? Yeah. My people need food. You're gonna find that food, and you're gonna give it to the people of my choosing. You get it? I tell you when and where, you keep it running. There ain't gonna be a lot left. Get creative. Find anything you can and bring it to me. Fuck. This isn't gonna be easy. I'm gonna need trucks, and I'm gonna need drivers. You'll have them. Deliveries start tomorrow. You hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I should do. It's Joel. Don't know if these things are getting through. Tell Mom... I love her. Tell her I'll be home soon. Dress it up however you have to. Just, just make sure she believes it. I don't want her lying there thinking. I'm hungry, and Jesus, I'm hungry. I need a fucking pigeon raw if I could catch one. The Sarah people were handing out MREs, but they didn't have enough, and people started getting rough. I didn't, but you know, I, I can't blame them. Hunger, it gnaws at you, like your brain's eating itself from the inside out. I lied. I got rough, but I got something to eat. You don't need to call me back. Shane, don't! <laughs> ah! I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> Got your voicemail. The cell service is hit and miss these days. Like everything. Power comes and goes. You don't find a, a place to sleep before dark, nobody lets you in. Too afraid you're bringing a disease with you. Those nights, I end up in a hallway somewhere. We're sleeping in an alley under a cardboard box, like some kind of bum. It's fucking cold in this city, you know? Like, I, I knew it was, but when you can't get away from it, you realize it is a lot colder than you think. Nobody's got spare food. I'm running out of ramen. Don't know what I'm going to do when that happens. Mom's going to be fine, Dano. Yeah, I'm sure it's something else.
Dan, you stopped leaving messages. Why'd you stop leaving messages, Dan? I have news. Tons of things to tell you. I'm doing better. Found some folks to hang with. The right crowd. Strength in numbers. We take what we want, who we want, when we want. We eat every single day. Darwin, man. These are my people. We're gonna survive. <laughs> You're never gonna hear this. It's gonna live on an NSA server somewhere in Nevada, like the nuclear waste they bury in the desert with the cockroaches nothing can kill. Soon we'll all be gone. The cockroaches will rule the earth. Good fucking riddance. Furious. They left me. They left me. For weeks, I did as I was told. I came to consulate. I did not contact DCD. I stayed hidden while an epidemic raged outside. And I might know better than anyone what is really going on. I hid so well, it seems, that they forgot to tell me of the evacuation. They left. This is a wonderful English phrase. In the dead of the night. I... I have no words. And now I'm here, in the city, under martial law, with no protection. There is only one benefit to this. Now there is no one to tell me I cannot contact DCD and offer my help, or find Dr. Amherst. Now I am free. I hope it is not too late. do this. You'll take out the power for the whole city. <laughs> Only gonna do it if we have to. If our place in the city is not respected. Because if we don't get a place, then my people will make sure nobody's got a place. And until then, we gonna live. I'm headed back to Lex. Keep this place warm for me. Or don't. Your call. Just 
make sure you don't leave anyone alive. It's been a long time, my friend. A long time since I told you about my adventures, my duty to the city, even. You see, I was attacked by, the, by, by, by a great many of those escaped prisoners, but, but I fought them. And even though I was outnumbered, I escaped through the window. I haven't been back since. Too dangerous. All my notes, all my gadgets, all my, 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 my tools of justice must remain behind. But I will find a new lair. And I will plot my revenge. And when the time comes, I will reemerge once again and show them the power of justice. Recording this? No, no, that's fine. When we're done, you're gonna let me go, right? That was the deal. Anyway, my name is Sharona Diaz, and I'm. I was a nurse practitioner at Bellevue, the hospital. Worked there 16 years, so I've seen all kinds of bad stuff, but nothing like this. Okay, I'm sorry, um. The first cases we got? Early December, the night of the 5th. They started coming in, just a couple at first. The symptoms they presented looked like flu, and that's what we thought it all was. I mean, we knew it was going to be a bad season, and that's what we thought this was. So we gave them fluids and sent them home like you do. I mean, how were we supposed to know? What the disease control department finally told us was scary. This thing, nobody was saying smallpox yet, was virulent at two parts per million. Direct contact airborne contagion too. It was scary. Then the governor declared it an emergency and they locked the city down and we realized what kind of hell we were going to be in for. The National Guard moved in, but what were they going to do? They weren't doctors. All I'm saying is that it's time for us to take responsibility and realize that we're neglecting an entire class of citizens here. We're deliberately denying U.S. citizens the medical treatment they deserve. The facilities are beyond capacity and they're sick and dying just the same as we are out here. Well, I think you got your priorities all out of whack, Yvonne, I'm sad to say. You're implying that it's more important for us to put the precious resources we have left, not to our public hospitals and clinics here in the city, but to send them off to take care of murderers and rapists. Is that what you're saying? That's a massive oversimplification of the issue at hand, John. You're really not helping the discussion here. Oh, I'm not. And you're somehow having our best interests in mind. If it were up to me, we'd send the staff home to their families and leave the inmates behind until all this blows over. I can't believe you just said that. Am I wrong? Is that not what most people would say if this was put to a public vote? How about we bring some of our listeners in here? What do you think?
Echo available for playback nearby. Jess, I hope you got out while you could. I know you love germs, but <laughs> this is a little much, even for you. If the world ever gets back to normal, I hope you find this and know that I didn't suffer. I don't want you wondering. I'll be thinking of you, thinking about the place we spent our first night in the city together. I can't think of any place I'd rather be. I love you. Always. Listen to me. I brought these people out of the dark zone and we were followed. I tried to hold up in a JTF safe house, but the Rikers out there didn't back off. If you don't pull us out, these people are all dead. It's Lima Charlie Vanguard, but that zone is too hot for extraction. You'll sit tight and wait for their instructions. Angel 6 out. So that's it? We just wait to die? Not if I can help it. But the thing is, the patients kept on coming. I mean, you work ER, you're always ready for a bad night. But this was every day, and it never stopped. More people coming in, same symptoms. You'd see parents shivering next to their kids, with the kids trying to keep it together, and your heart, it, it just broke for them. Three, four days of this? We're pretty sure it's not flu. DCD was calling every couple of hours for updates. And they asked all these questions that made it pretty clear. They didn't think it was flu either. Got your message. Thanks. I'm glad it was quick, I guess. I wish I could have seen her before. Dan, today I saw these guys on the street, standing around this old man. They wanted his suitcase. They didn't know what was in it, but they wanted it anyway. And he didn't want to give it up. So they knocked him down and started kicking him hard till he passed out. Danny, I was one of them. Get out of town. All right, put the boys in the car, go to the lake, and take Dad's shotgun. The three of you can live there for months. Do it, Danny, before it's too late.